last game on the agenda that uh, I've played a bunch of now already. Um, and I'll you play started some last night. Of. Tunic. Uh, it's a game that has been kind of teased and shown off for a very long time. It, you know, it falls into the category of uh, Cuphead for me, where it was like one of those five second snippets and one of those ID at Xbox trailers, and everyone's mm. like, wait. Wait, more of that. I want to see more. What, yeah, what, what was that? This? I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. Show us the um, Fox Zelda game. Show, show us the Fox Zelda. Yeah. It's very funny because it genuinely is like Fox Zelda. And then when you think about it, the game is named after his green yeah, I, tunic. I, I like, think oh it, my God. it's it's very, very clever way to be like, hey, I've taken clear inspiration from this beloved franchise um, mm-hmm. and named mm-hmm. it something that's iconic, but not at all linked to that franchise. Ha, linked, linked to what I did there. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, Tunic is very much an isometric Zelda game. Um, I think if you've ever played something like A Link to the Past or A Link Between Worlds or most recently uh, Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch, you'll kind of know what you're getting into here. Um, I do think, though, that it is different in some very fundamental Oof. ways. Firstly, <laughs> combat harder. is way <laughs> harder than any Zelda game I've ever played. Yeah, the, I mean, it actually borrows some elements from the Souls, in yeah. my view. I don't think it's mm. nearly as hard as them because I know some people are like, oh, as soon as they hear that, they switch <laughs> off. It's definitely not as hard no. as that. But it's got this idea of, like, you rest at campfires and then the enemies respawn. Um, and wherever you die, you leave a sort of little fox hologram. Yeah. Um, I do really like that when you reclaim your little soul, uh, it does like a big attack. So yeah, if it's in the it middle of like, like a bunch of enemies, it just clears cool. them. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very neat. Um, so yeah, you kind of explore these diorama worlds. It's all interconnected into one bigger world. Um, and you're kind of just like going through the motions, going uh, between different areas, which are like pseudo dungeons um, and and kind of just, I, I'm not entirely sure what the story is. I, I can't no, really tell you. Very... I just know there's like magic in this mm. world and it's like very charming and very cute. Um, the thing that is absolutely blowing me away with this game is just the incredible level design. Mm. It's it really is. It, I think you need to go into this game with the mindset of the perspective is very much it's purposeful. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hiding things purposeful in plain sight. Yeah, yeah it, it wants to be like, cool, you can only see from this angle. We are going to put things just out of view so that you kind of need to experiment with where you're moving in the world mm. um, to kind of, uh, you know, uncover secrets. And I think if you go in with that mindset, you will find a lot of the secrets the game expects you to find. Mm. Like uh, you start poking around um, little corners, which you think like, oh, maybe there's a pathway there. And true's Bob, nine times out of 10, there's Mm. like actually a pathway there. Um, But last night I've had like two or three now just straight up like gasp out moments where I've taken a ladder after a long, a long uh, dungeon run uh, up somewhere and it's, pop me back somewhere in the overworld and I'm like, mm. oh my God, this thing was always here. It was yeah. never gated off. I could have just found this. Exactly. Um, and so this game is open to like some incredible sequence breaking because all the most of the parts that, you know, lead to critical things are actually just there. You just yeah. don't know they're there. You just there. don't know they're there, yeah. Yeah, they, they're hidden in plain sight. There's some, uh, they, there's this really great moment last night where I got a lantern and literally the room before I got the lantern, I walked back into it and realized there were like two doors in that room that I did not see just because I didn't have light. <laughs> like, and I would have never have thought to look where they were. Yeah. But now that I had this thing, it's just like incredible shit like that. It's yeah, it's you, really on the level of a from software in that regard. Yeah, but just the way the way really the levels good. fold onto each other. I mean, I was telling you before we started recording that. So I've only played maybe an hour, an hour and a half. So very early days compared to you. But there's one part early on where you do a whole like little side area and then you climb down a ladder, walk behind a waterfall and pop out into a very, you know, accessible area. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, this pathway was here the whole time. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. it's there. It's it's not even like hidden in plain sight is the perfect expression because like it's it's there. <laughs> yeah, just it's not like it. you need an yeah. item to access it. No, it's, it's just it's, there. It's like, not like uh, I hit I hit the wall or you know uh, I yeah. hit a lever and then it's like 
no, you just have to look. It's there. It's really right yeah. there. It, it, um, this game is is ripe for exploration. It wants you to poke and prod at it. Um, and I, I, I've noticed in some cases, it's very smart about how it how it uses its perspective because like you will see the tiniest corner of a chest or something like that. Mm, and exactly. then if you hit left trigger, you slightly shift the camera to another perspective and yeah. then you can see it. And you're like, oh, okay, I know how to get there. That's clever. Um, but then on top of it, you've just got really robust combat i think that mm. uh, kind of i've got to the point where i can upgrade things um and it's just opening up in very interesting ways i've got magic now as well so nice. that's opened up a whole new dynamic to to the combat but then i think also one of the coolest parts of this game are these little pieces of like parchment that you find yes, lying around. What, a, what an awesome touch so these little pieces are essentially pieces of i guess like a game book i guess if this game was physical like something that would come in the case they have just the most incredible art design to them mm. um, and they kind of showcase some of the game's mechanics mm. and again they explain mechanics that you are able to make use of from the beginning of the game yeah. but you're never told that those mechanics exist. So mm. for about a solid hour yesterday, I was picking up items that I didn't know what to do with. Uh, like I had no idea what they did. Uh, when I opened them in my menu, there were just like question marks there. Yeah. The game has a sort of like a language to it that you can't decipher. Like, mm. so you can't read up descriptions on the things that have descriptions. Like even yeah. now when you picked up the sword in the footage that we saw, it came up with a, a message and two options like yes or no, but you, yeah, it doesn't tell what you what the message yeah. is. Like it, so you don't actually know what what you're doing. Um, I just sound my life away. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> but then this game book slowly fills in the blanks of that uh, uh, of that and its world. So like these items that I found, I found a piece of this game manual that eventually said, "Oh, if I open up my inventory when I'm at a shrine, then I can actually use those items." And mm. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like. When I play this game again, I can do that from you the get-go. Do I don't beginning. have to wait yeah. to get that. Like, it tells you how to sprint. It tells you the windows of your invincibility when mm. you when you roll. And so it it slowly like it slowly gives you these different mechanics that have always kind of been there, but it just kind of explains them to you in a very digestible and exactly. slow way. And I just I've never seen a game that does that, and no. I think it's fucking genius. Well, I, have, have you paid attention that when you have you ever got into the so when you pick up these pages it almost adds to like you know an an overarching manual there's like a grand yes. manual have yeah, you ever, yeah, they each have like page numbers yeah have you ever gone to the end and seen what you see if you just hold left it like pulls away and it looks like you're looking at a manual and behind it is a pixelated screen which is basically being like you are playing a game that's what it's showing you. Oh my Have God, a look. I You'll did not see. Notice that. Yeah, so I've noticed every time you pull open that the manual. That is amazing. It's like it's almost like this um, effect that happens where it's like you you meant to be a person like you represented playing as a the person game. playing the game, reading through a manual, oh my and the God. screen's just to the right, like page two all the way to the end of the manual, and just hold left. You'll see what I mean. It's such a small That's subtle so touch, cool. but it's very cool. Yeah, it's too good. It's. It's really and and like I cannot every time I see one in the in the overworld I'm just like oh my god I need to go I, get I that to I get really want to see it like they they have to make a physical version of that booklet mm, like 100%. I want it because the the um artwork in it is it's, just it's incredible, incredible. Can, like yeah well, so good on that can we just highlight the fact that this game is made by about one person I cannot believe a that a single like, person it's and again we we were talking about Ghostwire earlier and how it it could have learned from so many other games. This game takes so many good lessons from so many different genres and like but nails them. Just perfects them. Like yeah. the the level design, that's that's one thing that always blows my mind whether it's a indie studio or triple A studio, a game that's designed well. Like I I think the closest comparison I have recently is uh, Metroid Dread. It's a thing mm. of you think how how that they've managed to put this together where I'm doing this whole side area and then I pop out and like, of course, it falls back into where I need to go. Um, and this game it's does so that. It's so expertly designed. It's one yeah. person who's not only nailed the combat, the visuals, the soundtrack, which is also really good. Yes. The art design and the little manual, but it's also somehow managed to design this world in a way that 
you know, like we said, I don't think we we said it before we started recording it. You can break the game right if you know where to go. Um, mm. But it, if you don't, you're playing it for the first time. It like subtly funnels you in the right direction. It's so yeah. clever. I haven't felt lost yet. No. I always feel like I'm moving around and doing stuff. And I've, you know, I've taken small notes of things that I'm like, okay, this is clearly something I don't understand how to interact with this yet. And I'll come back to it. Yeah. You know, eventually. Um, it reminds me a lot of, uh, I don't know if you played back in the day, but uh, a game called Fez, which no. was more a puzzle game, but it mm. it's sort of similar. It funnels you towards your objectives, but there are instances where you see something and you're like, it's not like, oh, I don't have the ability for this. It's like, I do not have the knowledge to know what I need to do here. Yeah. Um, and there will be something that unlocks or something that I read in a manual and it will be like, oh, all of those things I saw suddenly make sense. It actually mm. happened to me yesterday. I got a piece of a manual that showed a structure that I'd seen twice already. And it was like, oh, when you see that thing, you need to hold this button in front of it. And I was like, I could have done that if I'd known. Mm. Now I can go back there and do that. And it activates something or progresses the story in some interesting way. So I said, speedrunners are going to have a fucking yeah, blast I can't, this I game. can't wait to, you know, finish it myself and then go watch how people not even break the game. They're just going to figure out how to sequence break it. They're going to optimize the sequence exactly, breaking. Yeah. yeah. Cause you, you can, you can fight bosses out of order. Like I've, I've seen now you are fighting the guard captain, which is technically the first boss of the game. There is a way, I don't know how, but there is a way to get here without having the sword. How? You need the Wait, sword to exactly. cut Exactly. It's fucking the, crazy the to me. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it, it's possible. There, there are people who have inadvertently got to this boss somehow just through the way they, um, you know, translate or, yeah. the world and perceive the world. They've gotten there in a different way, whereas I'm sure the critical path is like, you know, take a sword. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's so good. This uh, game is the first game this year that is genuinely, like, it's just wowed me. Just mm. every <laughs> single bit of it. I just love it. Absolutely love it. It's too good. Um, yeah. Yeah. What a game. I, my only criticism, it's not really a criticism, is that I feel that you get the shield too late because that makes yeah, combat it's very way late. more yeah. palatable. Like, yeah. the moment you can block it, I feel like I can take on anything. But without it, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> There's right. also like instances where you come up against like shooting turrets that oh my god you need that shield Those to, to get are by the them absolute like worst yes I hate yeah them. The, the I mean on that the one criticism I have as well is I maybe this is because of muscle memory with Zelda but I I always find myself locking onto an enemy with left trigger and thinking immediately that that will bring up my shield as well. And it doesn't. A hundred percent. Yeah. You need to press the right I, trigger. I almost feel that yeah. I need to swap those buttons around. Yes. Just out yes, of like, because out of habit, I feel like left trigger will be blocked, but it's not. That's to focus on people. So I think I might do that. Um, the number of times I focused on someone, then I get hit and I take damage. I'm like, wait a minute, what? And I was like, <laughs> oh, I wasn't holding. Because Zelda is like, as soon as you lock on an enemy, uh, Link puts up his shield. Yeah. So yeah, I you know, it's probably purposeful, but mm. like if I could change that, I probably would. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, it's got it's got really good. I, yeah, the combat's good. Everything. Ah, I love this Great game. game. So Can't much. wait to it's, actually. I see cannot believe it's on it. Game Pass. It feels like a steal to be mm. playing this game and not paying the thirty dollars. But it is so fucking good. Yeah, I cannot wait. I'm sure it will come to other platforms. Mm. Um, because right now it's only on PC and Xbox. But yeah, that game on Switch will be great. Ten out of ten. Mm. Yeah, really good game. Cool. Yeah, Tunic. Great. Tunic. Game. Great game. 